It's Rish Raff and welcome back to an all new episode and today we're gonna to be making a part damage system and let me go ahead and go over the few basics of how and what is a part damage system now I love making systems in Roblox so a part damage system is a part that is going to be damaged over time so we're gonna go ahead and start by inserting a part I'm gonna get right into this video today and when we insert this part we're going to go ahead and insert one thing into it. Sorry for the background, guys, if you guys notice that. And we just need one simple script. And you can have this all across your game. So I'm going to go and rename mine the damage script. Script name does not matter. So in this instance, I do have a damage script. So I'm going to start by saying I'm going to go ahead and get the player. Because how I want to activate this, this explosion, this fire, this, this part is going to catch fire and over time it's going to explode. It's going to be an exploding barrel basically. And it's kind of like the new Fortnite update when you hit the gas station and it catches fire and over time it explodes. So I'm going to go ahead and first things first I'm going to edit the properties and I'm going to go ahead and anchor it and I'm going to turn can collide on. It's on already by default. I'm gonna go ahead and get the players. So I'm gonna say players equals game get service players. And I'm going to be posting the model in the description below with the script attached. So you guys. I recommend you guys use this in one of your games as an exploding barrel for a challenge or something like that. But that's just me. And this is basically a simple hit function here. I'm going to say hit.parent because we're getting what hit the actual block. So we're not going to use a click detector, we're actually going to use a touched function the built-in function in Roblox. I say that in like every video. Just a little side note guys while I'm coding here. I am making a game for iOS, Android, PS4, all platforms. And what it's going to be about is an open world driving game. It's basically this open world simulation game. Find first child and we're gonna have a print. So I'm just adding a print statement. And we're gonna start damage. And you're probably thinking, oh, we don't have a function called start damage. So let's go and actually create one. I recommend you guys watch the video and uh, learn the code because it's gonna be a fairly short video. I know I always say that. Instance dot new. So we're gonna create a new int value. Now we're gonna set the int values parent to the script parent, which in this case is the part. I'm gonna go and define damage.value. So what this is, I'm just saying D instead of damage.value every time. D basically is damage.value. It's this, and then it's getting the int value's actual value. I just say D to waste, uh, sorry, not to waste time, to shorten the amount of time it takes to write the code. And I'm gonna go ahead and name the damage int indicator as current damage. So I'm going to create a while loop here. So I'm going to go ahead and say while wait. And you can't do while true do. And you can't do while wait do. You have to do while wait 0 0.5 or above. Depending on the speed of your computer and who's playing your game. Uh, I'd say a safe one is to do about 1. But in this instance, I'm going to do 0.5 to speed things up. If, 
Now, notice how these ends are already creating themselves for me. I'm not even worried about the ends. So this is if D, if the damage shot value is greater or equal to 20, and D is less, you can always configure these. I'm, these are just what I felt to be the most efficient. So this is a simple, simple condition saying if the damage is between 20 and 25, so if D is greater than 20 and D is less than 20 and there's not already fire on the part, let's go ahead and add some. Oops. We're going to add a fire and we're going to say the fire's parent is going to be the part, which is in this case the script dot parent. I'm going to say fire dot position. I'm sorry, did I say? And so the fire is going to be on the part itself. And you don't need to define position for fire. It's just uh, how it works. I don't really know why you don't have to, but hey, it's a Roblox. So we're gonna go ahead and add. We're gonna go ahead and leave an end here. And this is the end of that if statement. Now we're gonna go ahead and create another if statement. If D is greater than 100, sorry, greater than or equal to, because it might not be over 100. It might be equal to it. <clears throat> Then, oops, then we're going to add another if statement. It's mostly scripting comes down to conditional statements mostly all the time. We're going to insert an explosion. And we're going to go ahead and create an explosion here. Make sure that these do add up and these are the same spelling. Otherwise, your script will not work. We're going to create the explosion. And explosion.name is just going to be explosion. I think it is already that by default, but I'm just going to keep like that. And we'll have an end for this, this condition, an end for this condition. So we'll have this one and this one be for these conditions. We're going to drop another line. Remember this weight, this weight loop goes down to this end right here, and this function goes down to this end right here. So this end right here is for the function, and this one is for the weight loop. So anything between these lines of code is will be repeated every 0.5 seconds. So every half a second. And the last condition, and we're en entering near the script here, near the end of the script, is fire fire dot size equals fire dot size plus one so every 0.5 seconds the fire will get greater a key component of the script before we close the script out is to remember that we need to add we need to make our damage value go up every half a second so damage equals damage plus one this you can definitely change it's configurable so when you guys are coding almost forgot it at the end of the script you go d equals d plus one you can't do damage equals damage because damage is not a value even though it is an int value game object you have to do local or i'm sorry you have to do d because d is the damages value so i could also write here instead of d i can say damage dot value but I just prefer to write D because it's shorter. Let's go ahead and hit the test here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to actually hit the object here. You should see the output, starting damage. And I'm actually gonna get away from it so I don't get hit in the process. And you should start to see the fire. And as you can see, the, the fire is slowly rising, the sl the, slowly getting bigger. The heat intensity, the size is going to get bigger. 
and it's going to go ahead and overtake the object and before you know it should be an explosion it's slowly building it's slowly gathering in size and it's just going to create a mass explosion and you know, the fire might be max size so there there goes the explosion there it went off and it just keeps going off and it keeps going off and it keeps going off so a way that we can prevent this and a way that we can put the explosion actually on the part itself is we can do explosion dot position equals script dot parent dot position and we can also say then if once we have the explosion script dot parent dot dot destroy we can go and destroy our script dot parent so I'm gonna make this a little bit faster so that you guys can see I'm actually gonna make it uh, the same amount of time and so we don't have to waste that much time again so now it should go at least five times faster so now click this brick I do have a laser system coming up soon so there goes the fire automatically I do have a whole lot of systems coming up uh, soon and boom you're always going to get this error right here because it's basically saying oh we just destroyed the game object we just destroyed the part, but yet you still want to find the fire of the game object when it, everything's been destroyed. So we hit it, should see fire again. I should slowly start to, and there goes it, there it goes. So that's basically it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I did have a couple errors because I did do them on purpose because I wanted to show you guys how it looks from a coding perspective and not to give up when you're coding because you can definitely use what you've learned in a different script and you can just make scripting a lot better and you can learn from your mistakes so thanks so much for watching go and hit my kickstarter it's below it's for 3d game open world multiplayer driving game it's going to be third person as well kind of like grand theft auto Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I hope you have a great day. Listen.